The three hijackers threatened to kill some of the 145 passengers aboard, most of whom were Americans, if the plane was not refueled. It has now flown on to Algiers. The gunman, believed to be Shiite Muslims, hijacked the TWA jet as it was heading from Athens to Rome. They forced the plane to Beirut. Nineteen of the passengers, 17 women and two children, were released in exchange for the fuel that the pilot then used to fly on to Algiers. This conversation between the pilot and the Beirut control tower indicates the tension aboard the hijacked plane. How many Americans might possibly be among the released? Now, the plane originally was on a flight from Athens to Rome. It was hijacked by at least two men and forced to land in Beirut. More than 150 people were on board at that time. Low on fuel, a hijacker in his cockpit, the pilot had to argue and plead his way down to the tarmac. The pilot's problems did not end on the ground. The hijackers wanted fuel, and the airport was unwilling to provide it. While the plane was refueling, the hijackers released 17 women and children. They slid down the plane's emergency escape chutes, leaving husbands, fathers, and brothers behind. Some were in shock. Then they boarded a plane for Cyprus. They were met by U.S. Embassy personnel, and a few of them described the ordeal to reporters in Cyprus. By the way, that stewardess deserves a Congressional Medal of Honor. Which one's that, sir? Miss Derrickson. You yeah, Derrickson. She was the purser on the plane. She really and she she got everybody she got everybody organized and told everybody to be calm yeah. and just to listen to everybody, to listen to what we were being told and to pay attention and we wouldn't be harmed. They explained their position and uh, what they were anxious about for their country in Lebanon. And uh, we listened to them. And they gave us food and drink and treated us uh, the same as the flight attendants did. They carried grenades, automatic weapons, and handguns. There were 153 passengers and crew aboard, 104 Americans. And then as the plane near Beirut... The Lebanese authorities relented, and as you see, the plane, for the third time in a little more than two days, landed once again by the sea at Beirut International Airport. They asked me to uh, look at every passport and give them the passports with Jewish-sounding names. They asked you for the passports? I collected every passport. I had 145 passports. Did she select those with Jewish names who were taken off the plane in Beirut? No. They looked at the passport. Uh, and he had two cans of maize, and he sprayed all the passengers with maize and came uh, flying through the aircraft. They jumped me personally with a karate chop against my chest and threw me against the cockpit door and then held the gun at my head. Well, they had two hand grenades, and at the initial takeover, they pulled the pin on the hand grenade, had it in their mouth. Yes, they had pulled the pin on the hand grenade, and the, hand, the pin from the hand grenade fell on the floor, and he made me pick it up and stick it in his mouth. They all said that at one point or another, they believed they would not live through it. 
and they all said they'll keep on flying. Steve Delaney, NBC News, New York. In Beirut, the body seen here in a casket being delivered by Lebanese army troops uh, to a United Nations force and put onto a truck and then delivered to American officials. Still, the identity of that passenger has not been established. Uh, the man uh, believed to be about 35 years old. Uh, it is not known whether he was a Marine. This is a decision for them to make, and the sure. decision isn't so simple sure. as just uh, trading prisons. Sure. The decision is, at what point uh, can you pay off to terrorists without endangering people from here on out once they find out that their tactics succeed? just a um, large explosion without a lot of uh, motion, but a lot of uh, shrapnel around and um, yeah. people getting cut, a lot of people taking pictures. <laughs> the TWA 727 and most of its passengers survived the mid-air explosion, which ripped a three-foot hole in its side. The scene in the cabin was thus. The explosion occurred in about row 10 or 11 at the floor level, making a hole in the fuselage about one meter by one meter. At the key airport in Rome, Italian officials said today all passengers, those just boarding and those coming from the U.S., have to pass through a metal detector and send their hand luggage through an x-ray machine. They said no problems had been evident for the flight in question. Officials increased the number of heavily armed security forces, including plainclothed policemen. All people boarding flights, including transit passengers, must walk through metal detectors. Their carry-on and checked baggage is also x-rayed. <laughs> 